do and stuff like that so so quickly that uh, So there's a lot of discussion on how do the institutions in Northern Ireland agree to whatever is proposed. And that's very complicated in Northern Ireland because, because of Northern Ireland's history, simple majorities don't really just work in Northern Ireland because that means that one community can do something that the other community doesn't like. So the nationalists, people who want to ultimately end up in a united Ireland, could say yes to a deal that uh, leaves the UK very closely or Northern Ireland very closely aligned to the EU. But the Unionists, the people who see Northern Ireland's future as you know, a solid part of the UK, would not like that so much. So it's very complicated and that seems to be where the final stumbling block is. So we saw as part of the arrangement Theresa May had with the DUP to support her government that they agreed to a payment of £1 billion over two years. It's possible that Boris Johnson is going to open the cash registers again and write a big cheque to the DUP as a price for their support. But their objection is not about the economic impact. This deal is probably quite good economically for Northern Ireland and certainly much better than no deal. Their objection is to a constitutional principle. Uh, so the question is, you know, does that come at a price and how high is that price? One of the things that the Prime Minister did in early September was expel quite a large number of MPs from the Conservative Party. Those people largely who had been voting for Theresa May's deal, but it's not clear, many of them were in her cabinet or in her government as ministers, but it's not clear the extent to which he can rely on all of their support. Quite a few, I think, probably will vote for the deal, but he may need all, almost all of them to get on. I think what Parliament doesn't want is no deal. That's the one thing we know about Parliament. And what we've always seen is it really depends on what people think will happen if they vote against a deal they don't like. A lot of people won't like this deal very much. Some may think it's much worse than Theresa May's deal. But if they think that this is the only alternative to, say, a returned Conservative government prepared to take the UK out with no deal, then they might vote for it. And we may see moves to say, well, we'll approve this deal, but only if it's confirmed through, up to, uh, through another referendum, what people sometimes call a confirmatory vote. So say, yes, you can have your deal, we'll leave, but we need to go back to the people and ask, actually, now you've seen what leaving looks like, do you really want to leave or do you rather remain an EU member? It's so quiet here, it's really...